Brown's Talking Birds. Made possible by the generous support of the Bird Watchers General Store, Orleans, Cape Cod. Birdwatchersgeneralstore.com. By Vortex Optics with the VIP warranty, their unlimited lifetime promise to keep you and your optic covered. Learn more at vortexoptics.com. And Beauty O Books, an independent, family owned bookstore carrying one of the largest selections of birding books in the world. Beautyobooks.com. Good morning. Welcome to our show number 854. It well, was reported by National Audubon this week, a shorebird, an adult bar-tailed godwit, known by the less-than-catchy name 4BBRW, made history by completing a non-stop over-the-ocean flight from Alaska to Australia, covering a total of 8,100 miles and setting a new official world record for the longest continual flight by distance of any land bird. Bar-tailed godwits routinely make migratory trips of more than 7,000 miles. And what makes their migrations even more amazing is the fact that they're not gliders like albatross or other seabirds. They are flapping their wings through the whole flight. In the case of 4BBRW, for almost exactly 10 days, 239 consecutive hours. Wow. Now some Parisian music, please. Pretty bubbly music, but unfortunately this story doesn't lead us to want to pop a champagne cork. It concerns the fact that the president of France wants to allow the trapping of tens of thousands of wild birds, including Eurasian skylarks, northern lapwings, Eurasian golden plovers, song thrushes, and Eurasian blackbirds. BirdLife International describes the president's draft order as, quote, unbelievable but true... French President Emmanuel Macron is endorsing bird poaching and doing it the day after the World Conservation Union's World Congress in Marseille, where he declared his determination to raise the stakes of biodiversity protection to the level of the battle against climate change. He is preparing to authorize the trapping of more than 110,000 wild birds, even though the French Council of State and the European Court of Justice have recently declared the practice illegal. Some is sûr. We'll keep following the story through BirdLife International. A conservation salute of the week. Well, National Drive Electric Week, designed to increase awareness of the awesomeness and importance of electric clean energy cars, was held recently. And with that in our rearview mirror, and with more than a touch of irony, maybe... We offer a conservation salute to another big corporation that's been building pollution-generating machines for many decades. It's Ford Motor Company. We're saluting them because in addition to creating the all-electric Mustang Mach-E, which we're told is selling quite well, and the new Ford F-150 electric pickup, Ford has announced they will spend $11.4 billion on new production sites in Tennessee and Kentucky, to build electric pickup trucks and cars and the batteries to power them. Ford says this will create 11,000 jobs in those two states as they try to recover from the collapse of the coal industry. Ford Chairman Bill Ford was asked what his great-grandfather Henry Ford would think of this transition to electric vehicles and he replied, I think he'd say, what took you so long? Meanwhile, there are three scientists who don't need a conservation salute from us because they've just won the Nobel Prize in Physics. Siakuro Manabe, Klaus Hasselmann, and Giorgio Parisi got the prize for their groundbreaking work in warning the world about climate change, which they started doing back in the 1960s, now being recognized for those decades of vitally important work on behalf of our planet with a Nobel Prize in Physics. Here's another salute. We're happy to be able to do this every week for a long time now, and that is to our wonderful Talking Birds ambassadors who are helping us to get the word out about birds and our environment. And thank you to Lena Roll from Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you, Lena. She says, thanks for bringing my road trips so much joy. Birding wouldn't be the same without your podcast. 
Wow, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lena. And thank you to Jim Wilson in Queenstown, Maryland. Jim says he listens while he exercises, and it makes the time go by faster. He says, I just started listening about two months ago, so I have lots of old shows to keep me going. Well, we call them archive, not old shows, but uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Jim says he's starting a class at the Arboretum, teaching one for beginning birders. So he says, I'll have many opportunities to being a Talking Birds ambassador and promoting your causes. Thank you, Jim. Well, Talking Birds listeners, this is your invitation to join the Talking Birds Ambassadors family. We'll send you a bunch of cards that you can hand out at your convenience to friends and fellow birders and nature lovers. And that's about it. To join up, just click on the Get Involved tab at the top of the TalkingBirds.com homepage. That's TalkingBirds.com. I think a lot of people will recognize this bird. It's our mystery bird. And this is a little preview of our contest. And by the way, if you'd like to enter our contest, it's kind of important to be hearing the show live. One way to do that is simply to go to TalkingBirds.com. Click on the Listen tab, easy as pie. Our live broadcast occurs, by the way, on Sunday mornings from 9.30 to 10 Eastern. Our mystery bird, this is a preview of our contest, is a small songbird with a dark grayish-brown back and head, whitish underparts, and a waggly tail. Feet, eyes, and bill are black. Our bird eats flying insects and occasionally small fruits. Our mystery bird breeds over much of the U.S., except for the far west and southeast coast, and winters through the southeast and Texas and down into Mexico, and uh, identifies itself by saying part of its name. That would be our mystery bird. Beautiful prizes include... Another one of those gift certificates from Beautio Books, home of one of the biggest selections of birding books in the world, and a Droll Yankees original iconic A6F classic tube feeder featuring durable metal parts that squirrels can't chew. In fact, it comes with a lifetime warranty against squirrel damage. So a preview there of our mystery bird contest. Still to come on our show today, we'll learn about Birdability Week with two guests from the Birdability nonprofit, which aims to help make birding accessible for all. Plus, we'll catch up with Mike O'Connor in our Let's Ask Mike segment. He's going to give us uh, maybe a little um, quiz. He's going to play a couple of sounds for us and see if we can figure out what they are. And up next, a duck that sports a very long tail and does a very deep dive is today's featured feathered friend presented by Birdwatching Magazine. For more than a quarter century, bird watching has been North America's premier magazine about wild birds and birding. A beautiful, long-tailed sea duck once had a common name that was arguably ageist, racist, and sexist. It was called Old Squaw. In 2000, the organization then called the American Ornithologists Union got rid of the name Old Squaw although they stated that political correctness was not sufficient to justify the change and that it was also made to conform with English usage in other parts of the world. In any case, the change was made and this long-tailed duck became known as the long-tailed duck. Brilliant! The plumage schedule of the long-tailed duck is pretty complicated with four separate molts per year. You can see this beautiful bird in big floating rafts or flying fast over the waters of both the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of the U.S. in winter, following breeding season way up in northern Canada, Alaska, and Greenland. In winter plumage, the male sports a white head and neck with a gray patch around the eyes and a large black spot extending from the cheek down the back of the neck with a black back and contrasting long gray upper back feathers. And a good field mark in the male is that long black tail. The non-breeding female's back, wings, and breast are brown with a white head and a brown or black cheek blotch. The long-tailed duck is a deep diver foraging to depths up to 200 feet and it spends a lot of time underwater. In fact, when it's feeding, it's submerged three to four times longer 
then it's on the surface. And what an interesting call this bird makes, as though it might be asking a question. Not sure what the question is, though. It's today's Talkin' Birds featured feathered friend, Clangula hyamalis, the long-tailed duck. Welcome again to our show number 854. Well, we've talked about birdability on the show before. Birdability is a pretty new nonprofit whose mission is to make birding accessible for everybody and every body, regardless of disability or other health concerns. As we broadcast our show live today on the 17th of October, we're just one day away from Birdability Week. Seven days of activities and panel discussions and events as a celebration and a sharing of ideas. One of our guests this morning is Birdability founder Virginia Rose. Good morning, Virginia. Good morning, Ray. It's so nice to be with you again. It's great to have you back on the show again for, I think, the third time. Our other guest is familiar to Talking Birds listeners as a member of our team and a creator of some wonderful audio postcards, but she spends most of her work time now as the birdability coordinator. It's Freya McGregor. Good morning, Freya. Hi, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> Before we hear about Birdability Week, let's get a little overview about birdability for those who haven't heard about it. We often hear about people who are looking for a product or service and they search and they search and they come to realize that it doesn't exist so they finally say okay i guess i'll create it myself in virginia i think maybe that's uh, you're one of those people when it comes to bird ability to uh, to have done that right right thank you ray uh yes after birding for about 20 years here in austin texas with travis audubon in a wheelchair um, I looked around and I realized there are no other people in wheelchairs birding. I don't mm. see any other people who have access challenges. And I started wondering about that. And um, then I decided they just must not know about it. Mm. All these people with access challenges, they just must not know about it because if they did, they'd be all over those birding trails, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. My non-birding friends crack up at that. At any rate, I decided it was time for me to do something about that, and so began birdability. And that was uh, how long ago now? Three years, a little over three years ago. Okay, and what is it? What has it meant to you, as a, you know, as a wheelchair user yourself, and to be able to inspire other people to join in? Um, it's been so important to me for a couple of reasons. First, I discovered after some years in birding that I had discovered a part of me and a happiness, mm -hmm. Ray, that I hadn't experienced before. Mm -hmm. And it was so profound that I thought everybody needs a chance to experience this for themselves mm -hmm. because it was so you know life-changing. And so in that respect, seeing people on the trails, seeing people in wheelchairs or with various other access challenges, be able to look in a scope and see a bird for the first time. And just, I, I wanna just get picture after picture after picture. They're <laughs> beautiful pictures of people for the first time seeing birds, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Well, Freya, you're about to kick off a big seven days, the second annual Bird Ability Week and uh, some special items you want to highlight, but give us a kind of a thumbnail sketch of the of Bird Ability Week, if you could. Yeah, so it's a really exciting week. Starts tomorrow. Um, virtual online events, anyone can join in. There'll be webinars and panels and social media prompts and um, National Audubon are um, being really fantastic partners with us for quite a few of those events and for the general week. Um, it was inspired by Black Birders Week last year. I, I'm a white um, person and I learned so much about the barriers that many black and BIPOC birders face when they try to go birding and um, the Let's Go Birding initiative that National Audubon has where they encourage Audubon chapters to reach out to their local pride organisations and make safe spaces for LGBTQIA plus birders to um, come birding. Those two things together is what kind of inspired me to um, put together Birdability Week last year and that's what launched 
um, this this work into one that became a non-profit earlier this year. So it's really exciting. This is our second year doing it. It's going to be really fun. All these great events here, uh, including a slow birding guided uh, workshop, a birding, a birding panel, a panel, what makes a birding location truly accessible. There's one that uh, Mike O'Connor didn't want me to mention here, do-it-yourself bird feeders uh, for, back- <laughs> for backyard birding, which is pretty cool. And uh, I know another one that's really important to you, too, is the Birdability Big Sit. So that'll be on Saturday, October 23rd. Tell us about yeah, that. yeah. So we're going to have um, some of our birdability captains, volunteers um, with birdability, uh, with different access challenges across the U.S. Birding um, in a big sit, and anyone can sponsor the whole team nut hatch or um, just one of us uh, if they want. Um, t- maybe you want to sponsor us like a dollar a bird seen or a dollar a bird heard or a hundred dollars if we see a Cooper's hawk or whatever version you like. Um, you can sponsor us through uh, the birdability website and. That money is going to help Birdability cover the costs around honorariums and workshop um, fees and um, American Sign Language interpreters uh, for Birdability Week. So it will be really fun to um, go birding with a bunch of different folks all over the country and um, raise some money for for this work. Mm-hmm. We're really short on time, but I, I, know, I know we want to talk about how people can get involved in Birdability and learn uh, more about it. Birdability.org is the website. Easy to find on social media as well, right? And birdability. And uh, Virginia, you, you wanted to talk about people getting involved in, in, in the sense of your captains that are all over the country. Tell us a little bit about them. All right. So birdability captains started very shortly after I started birdability. These are people calling in from all over the country, some with access challenges, some not interested in doing what I was doing in Austin in their locations. Mm -hmm. So over the last three years, at least 50 people have called in or submitted a form to apply to be a birdability captain. And we now have, I think, over 30 states represented. Mm. And they're each doing their own work. It's wonderful. Wow. Virginia Rose is the founder and president of Birdability. Freya McGregor is birdability coordinator. Virginia, thanks. Uh, and Freya, thanks so much. And good luck with Birdability Week. Thanks so much, Ray. Birdability <laughs> Week. You, is, Ray. Birdability Week. You're welcome. Thank you, Virginia. For Birdability Week is October 18th through the 24th. And uh, you can find all the details under programs and events at birdability.org or check them out on social media. Coming up next, it's our mystery bird contest in just one minute. The flutter of a tail feather. The flash of a wing bar in mid-flight. You don't always have a lot of time to identify a bird in nature, let alone to appreciate its beauty. But with Vortex Optics, you'll have the power to bring every wild moment closer. When you choose Vortex, you're choosing to have a partner in the field as passionate about nature as you are. Whether you're spotting old friends on the backyard feeder or packing for a -a once-in-a-lifetime trip to add a few species to your life list, Vortex offers a full range of optics and optics accessories for every birder and every budget. And whether the birds are taking you to another state or another country, you're always covered by the Vortex VIP warranty, an unlimited lifetime promise to keep you and your optic covered. If you'd like to learn more or if you need help choosing your next optic, Give Vortex a call at 1-800-4-VORTEX or visit vortexoptics.com. There's a pretty familiar sound of our mystery bird. Before we uh, go on to the contest itself, uh, just a reminder that if you'd like to share photos, videos, comments, or observations with fellow listeners, the Talking Birds Flock is the place to do it. It's exclusively for Talking Birds listeners, and you'll find it at facebook.com. Just type Talking Birds Flock into the search bar there to join the Talking Birds Flock. So our mystery bird contest, and there's the sound. It's a small songbird with a dark grayish-brown back and head, whitish underparts, and a waggly tail. Feet, eyes, and bill are black. Our bird eats flying insects and occasionally small fruits. This bird breeds over much of the U.S. and uh, winters down through the southeast in Texas. What is it? Let us know what you think it is. Remember, no correct answer means a drawing will determine the winner, even if we don't get that exact answer. So give it a try. 
or tell us definitively what that bird is. 781-837-4900 is the number. We often run out of time before we get all our calls in, so we hope you will call us as soon as you can. 781-837-4900 is the number. Meanwhile, let's ask Mike live here in just one minute. Beauty O Books carries one of the largest selections of birding books in the world. New, used, and rare books covering everything from backyard birding to general ornithology. From field guides to photography skills, biography, fiction, and humor. You'll find it all along with the knowledgeable customer service you've been looking for in one convenient place. Beautyobooks.com. B-U-T-E-O. Beautyobooks.com. My name is Leona Matthijs, and I am calling from Elliott Lake, Ontario. Being a Talking Birds ambassador gives me the opportunity to talk to other people about birds and because I'm disabled, about being a disabled birder, what the problems are. But mostly it is just being able to talk about something that we both really like, which is birds. Talking Birds listeners, we hope you'll join our ambassadors family at TalkingBirds.com. Mike O'Connor is uh, where he often is, down at the famous Bird Watchers General Store on Cape Cod. And good morning, Mike. Happy Birdability Week, Ray. Birdability Week starts tomorrow, Monday, October uh, 18th. Well, Mike, uh, yeah. last week you uh, had the screaming piha on the show, and uh, I don't know if you think you can top that this week with some kind of sounds, or what do you got there? Yeah, well, you know, a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, we talked about that Merlin app that came out with this bird call identifier where yeah. people people want this. If they hear a call and they put their smartphone up, it'll sometimes tell you what the bird call is, yeah. if it's a common call. The, the trouble was... Uh, it, it kind of, you know, it's not perfect, and it doesn't list all the calls. And I, I've been getting, usually this time of year, I get people come in with these mystery calls, especially at night. I'm hearing a bird call at night, which, you know, kind of sends up a little alarm because a couple of the owls, not many birds sing at night, especially this time of year, make any sounds at all. Mm. And so so fortunately, people have smartphones, and I'll always say, like, record it. And and here's here's one that I've, I've been getting a lot lately. I'm going to play it, and you know, unless I hit the wrong button and play Black Sabbath, this should <laughs> come through fine. Here we go. Now that's a oh, bird sure. chirping at night. People think, and, and they and they and they want to know what it is. Well, it turns out it's not a bird at all, and the app can't tell you that because they only do birds. It's a spring peeper. It's a little tiny uh, tree frog that that after they, we all hear them in the spring when they go in the vernal pools and they have a million of them it sounds like and they're all singing at the same yeah. time and it's this chorus of craziness but after the breeding season the birds, uh, the, bird, the little tiny tree frogs disperse and they move around and sometimes they'll get into people's garages or they'll get into their fireplaces and they make that little single sound yeah. and it sounds more like a bird than, than the chorus of frogs that we hear but it's actually a spring peeper, one tiny one, yeah. and and sometimes people get mad with I I don't I don't they don't believe what I say they they're convinced it's a bird, and sometimes during the day people ask about this call again somebody came in the other day with a recording and they thought it was a turkey or something I'll play this mm -hmm. one for you now. Oh yeah, I think I know what bird that is. There, pretty sh <laughs> pretty sure I know. All right, well, well, yeah. all right, well, you, you save your guess, and okay. I'll tell you what I think it is. Right, right. It's a, and, and some people think it's a, a turkey or some kind of grouse chirping yeah. in there, and it's actually, what do you think it is, Ray? Uh, I think it's a chipmunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> See that? You're smart, man. You yeah. city guys know yeah. all the wildlife. Yeah. And That's thanks right. for it's telling it's me earlier on that it was a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a chipmunk. That's how they earn their name, but that little chip, chip, chip yeah. call. And, you know, and, but a lot of times you're looking in the trees because you think it's a bird, mm -hmm. and, and the chipmunk's kind of hiding and making that, that kind of an alarm worked up note. And people think it's a, it's, it's a, one, one lady came in, she was a gardener. She's outside all her life, 
And she she played that for me, and I said, oh, that's a chipmunk. She goes, no, 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 no. And then I <laughs> took out a YouTube video where you could actually see the creature making the sound. Uh -huh. And her face dropped like she found out there was no Santa Claus. She just could not believe <laughs> that she she didn't, all these years of outside, she, she couldn't identify that call. Uh -huh. So the Merlin app is wonderful. It just doesn't tell you uh, other, other creatures yeah. that are out there. So when you're out there and you hear a mystery sound and you're not sure what it is, and if mm -hmm. Merlin doesn't help you, record it, because all your smartphones have this recording device yeah. or app on there, and then play it to a friend or send it to me or send it to you, and then we'll get these mystery birds out of the way, well, and that more creatures make sound than, than actual birds yeah. do. Well, if they send it to me, I'll send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> And, and next, so, so it sounds like a good plan. All right. And next week, Ozzy Osbourne will be... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Ozzy. Don't, don't you miss Ozzy? Okay. See you next week, Mike. Okay. Yeah, uh, bye-bye. <laughs> Every Wednesday, Birdwatching Magazine sends an e-newsletter full of information of interest to birdwatchers, including recent news stories about birds, conservation, and science, photography tips, stories about places to go birding, bird ID tips, and much more. Best of all, the newsletter is free. Sign up today at birdwatchingdaily.com slash newsletter. Back to the mystery bird contest. Trying to identify this bird. Our mystery bird contest is presented by Red Start Birding. Red Start Birding is your new resource for birding optics, gear, and expertise. Great birding starts at redstartbirding.com. Our mystery bird, what do you think it is? Just quickly, a couple of the clues about our bird. It's a small songbird with a dark grayish-brown back and head. Whitish underparts, it wags its tail, feet, eyes, and bill are black. Our bird eats flying insects and occasionally small fruit. And Scott is somewhere in the great state of Ohio. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. We have a lot of new uh, Talking Birds ambassadors from Ohio. And uh, am I right that you might be one of them? That's right. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Well, thank you again for that, and thanks for calling in here on the uh, Mystery Bird Contest. And not to throw you off or anything, that bird is not a spring peeper or a chipmunk or anything like that. <laughs> but uh, what do you what do you think it is? Um, is it an eastern Phoebe? Let me check the notes here. I believe that is correct. <laughs> eastern Phoebe. Correct. Nice job. Nice job, Scott. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're you're welcome. And uh, if you'll stay on the line, but you know, before we do that, I think we have time for a, a bonus question. Would you like to try it for a chance to win a gift certificate to Wisdom Supply Company? Mm, yeah, I'll give it a shot. All right. Which of the following birds is also known as Mother Carey's chicken? Is it A, the leech's storm petrel, B, the ruffed grouse, C, the willow ptarmigan, or D, only Mother Carey knows and she's not talking? Those would be your choice of Sarah, the mother's carries chicken. What do you think that is? Yeah. This is a kind of I don't know. Um, let me go with ptarmigan, I guess. The willow ptarmigan. It sounds like a totally logical answer to that one. Uh, who would guess this? It's actually the leech's storm petrel. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll tell the story about that uh, uh, next week. But, Scott, thank you right. so much. And stay on the line. We'll get your address and all that. Okay, thanks. All right, Scott, there in Ohio, uh, uh, correctly uh, identifying the eastern Phoebe as our mystery bird. Just a reminder again about our Talking Birds flock. We hope you'll join up and talk to other listeners and share photos and videos and observations about birds and nature and conservation. Just go to Facebook.com, type in Talking Birds flock to join up. Next week, we'll fire up the Zoom machine again to connect with a guest in Spain. He's UK birder David Lindo, who's traveling in Spain, and we'll talk to him about a bunch of things, because he's into all kinds of stuff related to birds, and we'll find out why he calls himself the urban birder. That's uh, all coming up next week here on Talking Birds. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next week. The bird show. I like that. Ray Brown's Talking Birds. Made possible by the generous support of the Bird Watchers General Store, Orleans, Cape Cod, BirdWatchersGeneralStore.com. By Vortex Optics, with the VIP warranty, their unlimited lifetime promise to keep you and your optic covered. Learn more at VortexOptics.com. And Beauty O Books, an independent, family-owned bookstore carrying one of the largest selections of birding books in the world. BeautyOBooks.com.